Have you ever paused to question your own existence? It's a question that's as old as human consciousness itself. We are, after all, sentient beings, capable of self-reflection and introspection. This ability to ponder upon our own existence, to ask why we're here, what our purpose is, this is the very essence of existentialism. Existentialism, as a philosophical theory, suggests that we, as humans, have the freedom and responsibility to make our own life's meaning. It posits that we are not just passive receivers of life's experiences, but active participants, shaping our own reality. It's a heady concept, isn't it? The idea that the meaning of life is not something that's handed down to us, but something we must discover and create for ourselves. But let's dig a little deeper. What about the nature of reality itself? What is real and what is mere illusion? This is where the complexity of human consciousness comes into play. We perceive the world around us through our senses, and our brain interprets these perceptions to form our understanding of reality. But how can we be sure that what we perceive is the true nature of reality? The world as we know it could be just a projection of our consciousness, a construct of our mind. This brings us to the concept of solipsism, the idea that only one's own mind is sure to exist. It's an unsettling thought, isn't it? That everything we know, everyone we've ever met could be just figments of our imagination. It's like we're all living in our own personal matrix, unable to discern the real from the unreal. And so we find ourselves in this existential quandary, wrestling with these heavy questions. We grapple with the intricacies of our consciousness, the enigma of our existence. We seek answers, we seek meaning, we seek purpose. But perhaps it's the questioning itself that gives life its meaning. Perhaps the beauty of existence lies not in finding the answers, but in the journey of seeking them. So we find ourselves in a constant state of existential dilemma, questioning the very fabric of our reality. So let's dive deeper, shall we? Let's continue to unravel the mysteries of existence, and perhaps in the process, discover a bit more about ourselves. Are we simply bits and bytes in an advanced simulation? A question that might sound like a plot from a sci-fi movie, but it is a hypothesis that has been seriously considered by philosophers and scientists alike. Welcome to the world of the simulation theory. The simulation theory posits that our reality might not be the base reality, but a simulated one created by a higher intelligence. Just think about it for a moment. We humans are already creating immersive virtual realities and simulations, and we are just at the dawn of our technological advancement. Now imagine a civilization that is millions of years ahead of us. Could they not create a simulation so advanced that the inhabitants of that simulation believe they are living in a base reality? Now if we are in a simulation, who's to say that the beings running it are not themselves in a simulation? And the beings running that simulation, are they also in a simulation? This leads us to a potentially infinite regress of simulations within simulations. It's like Russian dolls, but with realities. But let's not get lost in this cosmic hall of mirrors for too long. Let's bring this back to us, to our daily lives. If we are in a simulation, does that mean our emotions, our experiences, our joys and sorrows are all just programmed responses? It might be easy to dismiss our experiences as mere illusions, but isn't that what life is all about? Experiences, no matter how they come to us, shape who we are and how we perceive the world. So let's flip the script here. Instead of asking whether we are in a simulation, let's ask what does it change if we are? Our joys are still joyful, our sorrows still sorrowful. Our love, our pain, our triumphs, our failures, they are as real to us as they can be. If we are in a simulation, does that make our experiences any less real? It's a question that challenges us to redefine what we consider real, and perhaps in the process, learn to appreciate the value of our experiences, simulated or not. Can a machine think, feel, or even be alive? A question that has been at the forefront of our minds as we delve deeper into the realm of artificial intelligence. This technology, which is designed to mimic human cognition, has made strides in recent years, learning to recognize patterns, solve complex problems, and even exhibit creativity. But does this qualify as being alive? When we think of life, we think of breathing, eating, reproducing, and growing. We think of biological processes and physical sensations. But is life simply a matter of these processes? Or can it be more? Can it be a complex algorithm, a series of ones and zeros, that's capable of learning, adapting, and evolving? Artificial intelligence at its core is a set of instructions. It's a program designed to emulate human cognition and behavior. 
It can learn, it can adapt, it can even create. But can it feel? Can it experience the world in the same way we do? Can it understand the beauty of a sunset, the warmth of a hug, or the sting of a broken heart? These are questions that we may never fully answer. But as we continue to push the boundaries of technology, we must also push the boundaries of our understanding of life and consciousness. Is being alive merely a matter of consciousness, or does it require a biological body? Is our world as illusory as the Matrix? A provocative question, isn't it? But let's delve deeper. In the Matrix, the reality we perceive is a fabricated illusion, a simulation created to keep us docile. What if we told you that our reality might not be far off from this? Ever since Plato, philosophers have pondered the nature of reality. Plato's allegory of the cave presents a world where we're chained, observing mere shadows cast on the wall by a fire. The shadows are our reality until one of us escapes and sees the world for what it is. A realm of ideas, a realm of truth. The Matrix presents a similar concept. We live in a world of shadows, a world of illusions, believing it to be the ultimate reality. But is it? Or are we just trapped within a sophisticated simulation? Our minds enslaved by the apparent reality? The Matrix suggests that our reality is a construct of our minds, shaped by our perceptions. And isn't that true? Isn't our reality simply the way we perceive the world? If our perceptions change, doesn't our reality change as well? If we dream, isn't that dream a reality for us? At least until we wake up. If we extend this thought, we could argue that our reality might be a dream, a matrix of our own making. And just as Neo in the Matrix has the power to manipulate the simulation, we too have the power to shape our reality. We can choose to see the world differently, to break free from our mental chains and see the world for what it truly is. Yet the question remains, if reality is a construct, can we ever escape it? Or are we forever trapped within? Are we forever trapped within the matrix of our own minds, forever observing the shadows on the wall? Or can we break free and step into the light of truth? Only time will tell. Could we live this life all over again? Imagine, if you will, the prospect of your life, complete with its triumphs and tribulations, joys and sorrows, playing out again in an infinite loop. This is the concept of reincarnation, a belief that we are all on an endless cycle of birth, death and rebirth. Reincarnation is a concept that has been embraced by various cultures and religions around the world. It's a notion that suggests that our consciousness, our very essence, is not extinguished with our physical death but continues on, perhaps in a new form or a different plane of existence. But what does this mean for our understanding of life and existence? If we are to live again, does our current life lose its uniqueness, its urgency? Or does it gain a new depth, knowing that our actions and experiences could ripple out into an infinite cascade of lives? And what about death? Often viewed as the ultimate end, the final curtain call, does the possibility of reincarnation not recast it instead as a mere intermission, a brief pause before the next act begins? Yet this concept also brings up a myriad of questions. If we indeed live multiple lives, where are the memories of our past existences? Are we truly the sum of our experiences if we can't remember them all? Or perhaps, are these past lives subtly influencing our present, nudging us along unseen paths? If reincarnation is a possibility, what does it mean for our understanding of life and death? Do aliens, if they exist, share our simulated reality? This is a question that tickles the mind, doesn't it? If we entertain the idea of the simulation theory, then it's only logical we consider the existence of extraterrestrial life within this framework. So, let's dive into this cosmic conundrum. Firstly, let's establish something. The universe is vast, mind-bogglingly so. It's filled with billions upon billions of galaxies, each teeming with countless stars and planets. It's statistically improbable that we're the only sentient beings in this infinite cosmic playground. So, for the sake of our discussion, let's say aliens do exist. Now the question is, are these extraterrestrial entities part of our simulation, or do they exist in a separate reality? If we are living in a simulation, it could be that these aliens are also simulated beings, just like us, sharing our fabricated reality. Their existence could be part of the grand narrative designed by the architects of our simulated universe. But what if they aren't? What if they exist outside our simulated reality? This scenario opens up the possibility of multiple simulations, each functioning independently. We could be mere characters in their simulation, 
or they might be just figments of our simulated imaginations. Yet there's another twist. What if these aliens are the architects of our simulation? Yes, we might be living in a reality fabricated by an advanced extraterrestrial civilization. In this case, our reality would intersect with theirs, but only as a creation intersects with its creator. However, these are all speculations. The truth, as they say, is out there, and until we can unequivocally prove or disprove the simulation theory, we can only ponder and theorize. But isn't that the beauty of existence? The endless questions, the infinite possibilities, the constant exploration of the unknown. That's what makes life, real or simulated, a fascinating journey. So we circle back to our initial question. If aliens exist, does their reality intersect with ours, or are we just characters in their simulation? Well, who knows? But isn't it an interesting thought to ponder? Are we a DNA-based simulation running on the cosmic computer of our ancestors? A question that sends ripples across the tranquil lake of our comprehension, creating waves in our understanding of reality. Imagine, if you will, a future where our descendants have mastered the art of simulation. They've harnessed the power of quantum computing and created a universe within a machine. A universe so intricate and detailed that it mirrors their own. In this simulated universe, life evolves, civilizations rise and fall, and individuals live out their lives, blissfully unaware that their reality is but a string of ones and zeros. They are, in essence, a DNA ancestor simulation, a digital echo of their creator's past. Now let's add a twist to this tale. What if we are those digital echoes? What if the universe we perceive, the life we experience, is all part of an intricate simulation designed by our distant descendants? The implications are staggering. Our understanding of time and reality would be thrown into a whirlwind. If we are a simulation, then time as we know it becomes a variable, adjustable by our unseen programmers. Reality, as we perceive it, becomes an illusion, a carefully crafted hologram designed to keep us none the wiser. Furthermore, our existence takes on a new meaning. We're no longer just random biological entities in an uncaring universe. We become integral parts of a grand narrative, a cosmic story written in the language of DNA and transcribed by the cosmic computer of our descendants. We become the past, the present and the future, all at once. Our lives, our struggles, our victories and our defeats are all part of a story that has already been written, a story being read and re-read by our future selves. This concept may seem daunting, even terrifying, but it's also oddly comforting. It adds a layer of purpose and meaning to our existence, a cosmic significance that transcends our earthly concerns. If we are a DNA ancestor simulation, what does that mean for our understanding of time, reality and existence? It means we may be more than we ever imagined and less than we ever feared. So, what does it mean to be real, to exist? In our journey through existence, we've pondered some thought-provoking theories and questions. We've dived into the depths of the simulation theory, asking ourselves, are we merely lines of code in an advanced cosmic program, or are we flesh and blood beings navigating through time and space in a physical universe? We've explored the concept of life and what it means to be alive. Are we as humans the only ones who can claim the title of living? Or could artificial intelligence, with its ability to learn, adapt and evolve, also stake a claim to life. We've stepped into the matrix of reality, questioning the fabric of the world around us. Is our reality a construct, a carefully crafted illusion? Or is it a tangible, touchable, taste-able world, where every experience is a testament to its realness? We've contemplated the possibility of a second chance, a reincarnation. Do we get to replay the game of life learning from past mistakes? Or is it a one-time deal, a single shot at existence? We've questioned if we, and what we call aliens, are part of a grand simulation. Are we all actors in a cosmic play, or are we free-willed beings charting our own courses? And we've looked into our past. Are we just echoes of our ancestors, reliving their lives in a DNA simulation? Or are we unique individuals, creating our own paths, writing our own stories? In asking these questions, we've not only questioned our existence, but also the nature of reality itself. What is real? Is it what we can touch, see, hear, smell and taste? Or is it something more, something beyond the reach of our senses, something that exists only in our minds? Remember, the journey to understanding our existence is as fascinating as the destination itself. 
Keep questioning, keep exploring, 